Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord who God's life. All right, so I actually had another pastor ask me a long time ago why we even bother with having the Lord's Supper at all. To him, it was really just more trouble than it was worth. I mean, with all of the frustration that comes from maintaining closed duh, communion, with, with all of the danger that can come from communing wrong, with, with all of the division that comes along with communion, why bother? Because after all, God forgives us in baptism, and God forgives us in the absolution, and God even forgives us in the preaching, and we already had it a few times in that church service. Why bother with something that causes that much trouble? And the devil danced while he asked me that. And that's, by the way, the same devil who would always take God's word and try and steer it away from you, steer it into somebody else. Either through self-righteousness, he would point the law away from you, that um, you could actually come up to your pastor after church and say, boy, somebody sure needed to hear that sermon. And your pastor would look at you and be like, yup. But also in, in despair in the gospel that you could hear that Jesus died for you and actually think, yeah, but not for that, not for me, for the people back there who really look like Christians and must clearly feel like Christians where I don't. In all of it, the devil would point God's word away from you. But God actually wants you to receive his gifts in law and in gospel, that the old man would die and the new man would rise. In the Lord's Supper, God would give you this gift in a way that, that connects it to you, in a way that the devil could never point God's word away from you at all. Um, in the large catechism, Luther zeroes in on these words of our Lord, and he would write, This is my body and blood given and shed for you for the remission of sins. These are familiar words, for you, not for anybody else. Not for the person you're convinced really needed to hear that sermon. And not just for the people who you think actually deserve God's mercy. For you. God wants this gift of his word to be given for you. So he joins it to bread and wine and makes you eat it and drink it so that nobody else can have it but you. You cannot will this away. Even if you cast it off in disbelief, it still is what God says it is when you eat it and drink it. Either for good in faith or for ill apart from it. The Lord's Supper is still for you when you eat it and you drink it. It's just God would actually have it be for your good. He doesn't want it to be for your harm. In fact, God doesn't give the Lord's Supper as a burden, but as a gift. Luther would continue, On this account, it is indeed called a food of souls, which nourishes and strengthens the new man. For by baptism we are first born anew, but, as we said before, there still remains besides the old, vicious nature of flesh and blood in man. And there are so many hindrances and temptations of the devil and the world that we often become weary and faint and sometimes also stumble. So God gives us his body and blood to eat and drink for the forgiveness of our sins. God gives for you the body and blood of his own son to eat and drink for the forgiveness of all your sins. And that doesn't actually take away from all of the other means of grace. That doesn't take away from the sermon or the absolution or the baptism. It adds to them. It works with them. The sermon expounds upon that which we eat and drink. Baptism gives new life, but new life has to be fed. Same in the world. You can't just have a child and then not feed it. That's monstrous. And, and clearer here than anywhere else. God would give you his body and his blood where his word has been joined to means that you would eat and drink so that you would know all of these things that God was working from your new life in baptism to your growing in faith and understanding in, in his word, from your receiving the absolution, he would have this be for nobody else but you that moment. And so he puts it into your mouth and says, take it and eat it and drink it and know your sins are forgiven you. 